Hello, this is Lasso Silagi from Ericsson North America. In the North America Chief Technology Office, I'm responsible for network exposure, including go-to-market and technology strategy, use case discovery and partnering strategy. In today's presentation, we will discuss how mobile operators can accelerate 5G adoption in the technology ecosystems with third-party application platforms. The key thesis of this presentation is that besides directly exposing 5G network capability APIs to developers, we should consider interworking these APIs into third-party application platforms and then position these higher value at higher abstraction services on the leading API marketplaces. Uh, today, first, we will go through the 5G economic impact and key segments to set the stage, then uh, discuss the network capability APIs, which are relevant for edge and uh, uh, 5G application developments, then discuss the mobile operators go to market challenges with these APIs and how tapping into the existing ecosystems with third party platforms can potentially mitigate these challenges. Then we will discuss or, and overview the platforms and enablers relevant for relevant for uh, 5G and Edge, and um, what are the typical integration patterns uh, occurring if we want to integrate with these platforms on scale. Then we will discuss some examples in detail. So when it comes to the 5G economic impact, in a recent BCG. Uh, study, it was estimated that uh, the impact of 5G on the US GDP in the next decade will be beyond $1.4 trillion. And, uh, and this uh, figure is a composition of multiple segments from manufacturing, professional services, construction, healthcare, trade, finance, real estate, entertainment, transportation, education, agri uh, and agriculture. So what we see is that we are talking about a very wide range of requirements towards the network. And uh, if we want to simplify it a little bit, we can talk about maybe three main uh, requirement segments, uh, uh, massive machine type communication with use cases like logistics, tracking, fleet management, smart cities, smart agriculture, with key characteristics, including low energy, small data volumes, massive numbers. Then uh, we can talk about the enhanced mobile broadband uh, segment with uh, uh, ultra high density video, broadcasting, AR, VR, gaming, with uh, characteristics including extremely high throughput, improved capacity and improved coverage. Then we can talk about the critical machine type communication segment with uh, traffic and safety control, industrial applications and remote surgery use cases with key characteristics, including ultra-reliable, very low latency and very high uh, availability. And um, what we see here in general is that uh, in order to create these applications on scale with uh, flexibility and efficiency, we need uh, applications to, to be able to dynamically interact with the network infrastructure. And uh, this in interaction is uh, implemented by APIs and, uh, and network exposure. So what sort of network exposure capabilities we are talking about? Uh, we have three main categories, uh, network configuration APIs, network information query APIs, and uh, notification APIs. Uh, when it comes to configuration, quality of service is uh, enables the developer to specify uh, uh, guaranteed bitrate or, or uh, uh, priority requirements towards the network infrastructure. Sponsored data enables the developer to sponsor data sessions, so uh, the specific application is not affecting the data plan of the user. Background data transfer can optimize uh, firmware upgrades on scale for IoT devices. Um, device onboarding uh, enables IoT uh, applications to seamlessly integrate with the uh, uh, network infrastructure. Size selection API is the interface for network slicing. Traffic routing is a key capability for edge computing. Then when it comes to information query, location enables cellular uh, positioning. Uh, network performance uh, provides real-time or, or predictive information about congestion, bandwidth, latency, and coverage. 
and then the developer can also subscribe to notifications so about the client location change ip address change reachability user equipment change and uh, roaming status and uh, uh, and as you can see these uh, capabilities can really enable a dynamic interactions between the networks and the devices for these advanced next generation use cases but uh, we are still facing some challenges like some of these apis are pretty low level uh, and and this might uh, um, slow down the adoption in the technology communities then uh, also some of these apis are actually uh, implementing pretty sensitive configuration capabilities so some of the mobile operators might be reluctant to completely expose these apis and then we can also talk about apis which are potentially exposing uh, relatively sensitive information and some of the mobile operators might be not willing to share real-time information about their um, network infrastructure uh, and this also affects the go-to-market with these APIs. So, so on one hand, some of the mobile operators are not willing to expose all of these APIs to uh, marketplace towards developers. Then also the, some of the exposed APIs might be relatively uh, low level for some of the developer uh, demographies. And, and this is where we come to the key thesis today that, uh, that we should uh, consider uh, interworking these network APIs with third-party application platforms or higher value add application uh, development platforms, uh, which can on one hand uh, lower the barrier of entry for developers and uh, uh, with the higher abstraction, thus actually accelerating the innovation with the, um, for the ecosystem. Then uh, it can also abstract away the sensitive network configuration in and information uh, APIs, so so mobile operators can keep the control of these assets. So, what are the typical platforms and and uh, uh, enablers for five G and Edge in this discussion? Uh, first of all, we have XR with uh, rendering acceleration and localization acceleration on the edge, and with five G connectivity for uh, for connectivity guarantees. Then when it comes to gaming, again, rendering acceleration and, uh, and connectivity guarantees for, for uh, streaming. Uh, analytics with AI inference and stream processing. SLAM, uh, which is a simultaneous localization and mapping, a widely used technology for drones and uh, autonomous moving robots and uh, even augmented reality. Uh, again, point cloud processing on the edge. Uh, low latency messaging with message queues. Uh, databases with real-time databases content delivery with video and other static and dynamic assets uh, uh, leveraging uh, edge acceleration and uh, digital twins with real-time digital representations including hd maps uh, leveraging the low latency of the edge and the guaranteed uh, connectivity characteristics so tapping into the technology ecosystem with 5g in practice means that uh, integrating network capability APIs with the leading third-party platforms from these verticals and, uh, and offering these higher value-add uh, services on the leading uh, uh, marketplaces. So, so at the end of the day, from the developer, it is, a, it is a, a true cloud or platform as a service experience going into an API marketplace, uh, be that a cloud marketplace or any other relevant third-party marketplace for the specific uh, technology, then subscribing to the service on the marketplace, configuring the service parameters like geography, service level, uh, and retrieving the necessary API and keys and instructions to go on with the development, and then actually implementing the service, uh, configuring the service, uploading the necessary contents and artifacts, and, uh, and integrating the, the, um, the service with the to the app, uh, client applications and to the rest of the application stack and as you can see we are talking about no direct exposure to network apis or the edge environment it's a complete platform as a service experience and kubernetes is a key enabler to to make this happen so when it comes to 
implementation, we should uh, go into the platform lifecycle and the platform integration patterns. So first of all, when it comes to the life cycle, uh, we are talking about service introduction first. So this is the time when the service provider makes the service available. Then we can talk about the service subscription. Uh, this is when the developer uh, subscribes to the service. And then the service consumption, when the end user uh, uses an application relying on this service. And, um, and depending on, um, uh, on, on when the application runtime environment gets provisioned uh, at which stage from these three, uh, we can categorize the previously discussed uh, application platforms into three main uh, uh, patterns. Uh, the first being introduction, uh, introduction triggered runtime pattern that, or subscription triggered runtime pattern or the consumption triggered runtime pattern. And this is what we will discuss in the following slides in a, a little bit more details. So first of all, uh, when it comes to the introduction triggered runtime pattern, we are talking about applications like databases, real-time messaging, and CDN. So these are the applications where all the components of the service gets provisioned at the time of service introduction. And, and when the developer is subscribing to such a service, then uh, actually the access configuration is what is being triggered. And, uh, and the developer is accessing uh, a multi-tenant environment. And when it comes to the service consumption, actually the, the, the service consumer uh, client is, is basically retrieving the, or, or the artifacts and, uh, and configurations uh, which the developer has, has created in that multi-tenant environment. When it comes to subscription triggered runtime pattern, we are talking about applications like analytics with AI inference or stream processing, uh, simultaneous localization and mapping and digital twins. So at this, um, in this case, uh, at introduction time, the control plane is uh, getting provisioned. And actually the service subscription is triggering the application runtime, uh, the developer specific uh, service instance to be uh, provisioned, uh, which means that, that each of the developer gets a dedicated environment. It's a single tenant environment for the developer and it's a multi-tenant environment for the consumers and the consumers are, are, are accessing these environments uh, uh, used by the developer. And um, then we can talk about finally the consumption triggered runtime pattern. These uh, include the cloud gaming and XR. Uh, in this case, the, at service introduction time, the control plane is uh, getting provisioned and, uh, and um, the service subscription is basically provides a developer access to, the, uh, to upload the developer assets and configure the, the runtime uh, parameters and the actual service consumption is triggering the runtime provisioning. So when a cloud, when a gamer, cloud gamer or XR user is, is using this ad service, uh, the, the specific uh, resources are, are getting spit up. So let's look at into some concrete examples when it comes to implementation. So first, uh, let's, uh, when it comes to introduction triggered runtime pattern, RabbitMQ is a, is a good example. So RabbitMQ is the most widely deployed open source message broker, supports multiple messaging protocols, including MQTT and AMQP, supports plugins, wide range of client libraries, supports distributed uh, deployment with clustering and federation, and it's a multi-tenant uh, uh, platform with uh, its uh, virtual host uh, capabilities. And the network API use cases we, are, uh, we can consider includes guaranteed bandwidth and priority for the, for the message delivery, which uh, can rely on the quality of service API. Then latency, which can also rely on quality of service and uh, location API interwork with uh, DNS. And uh, when it comes to geofencing, we can rely uh, again on location. So we can make sure that uh, a specific service only available in a specific area where we can provide the SLA uh, 
depending on the edge deployments. We could also consider slicing and traffic routing uh, for the guaranteed bandwidth and latency uh, uh, use cases, but for simplicity, I'm, I'm leaving out uh, these APIs at this time. So when it comes to uh, service introduction, uh, it's, uh, it's important to uh, mention that uh, uh, we should uh, leverage the operator pattern uh, at Kubernetes to implement uh, uh, this um, service lifecycle management we are talking about. And according to this one, um, at introduction time, we are deploying the uh, operator and, uh, and operator controller, which is also uh, involves provisioning the RabbitMQ clusters, the marketplace in the, uh, uh, integration, and uh, the web portal for the developer. Uh, and we also have the network APIs onboarded. Uh, we can uh, integrate uh, quality of service and location APIs leveraging the RabbitMQ uh, plugin uh, capabilities. And we also need a DNS with, uh, with uh, location API integration. So, so when DNS queries are processed, uh, the location API can be leveraged for, for picking the the, the IP address of the processed edge uh, uh, RabbitMQ instances. When it comes to subscription, uh, this is when the developer is uh, specifying the requirements on the marketplace. And using that specification, the operator can uh, configure the virtual host with the uh, quotas using the RabbitMQ uh, ONM APIs, the native uh, uh, RabbitMQ APIs configure the DNS with the developer specific uh, URL uh, for the service that can configure the access to the uh, developer web portal and uh, can provide the client key and URLs for the developer. Uh, and then the developer can perform the, the client SDK uh, integration to, to use the service. And then at the consumption time, the client uh, accesses the service via the provided URL then the DNS routes to the closest edge using the location API as discussed. The, the RabbitMQ plugin that can trigger the quality of service API for that specific, uh, specific client. And, uh, and if the client is uh, outside of the Geofence message delivery uh, area, then, then the, the message delivery can be uh, suspended. For subscription uh, triggered runtime pattern, uh, let's discuss the NVIDIA DeepStream as a, as a, uh, as a uh, platform example. Um, NVIDIA DeepStream SDK is, uh, is a stream analytics toolkit uh, for uh, AI-based multi-sensor processing, video, audio uh, understanding. And it's very well integrated to uh, the NVIDIA ecosystem and uh, uh, there are multiple deployment options, including from embedded Jetson devices up to the uh, high-end uh, uh, GPU servers in the cloud. Uh, when it comes to the relevant network API use cases, again, we, are, we can talk about guaranteed bandwidth, latency, and geofencing. Um, but uh, we can also um, uh, this, uh, include sponsored data for uh, for video streaming because it can be very significant data traffic and uh, video stream optimization with network bandwidth and network congestion information. When it comes to the service introduction time, uh, again, operator controller deployed, then we need a container registry with the pre-configured deep stream flavors because we are not exposing the deep stream SDKs directly, but we can also abstract away uh, uh, the, the details of the, uh, of the configurations and, and create pre-configured deep stream uh, uh, images uh, uh, in the and, and store it in the container registry. And once the developer specifies its requirements, the, the proper uh, image can be selected and provisioned. Then we need a model repository for the developer, which is uh, of course empty at the beginning. And uh, we need a WebRTC media server for handling the video uh, streams. And, and this is where we also need to pre-integrate uh, the media servers with the 
quality of service, sponsored data, location, network bandwidth, and uh, uh, congestion information. And we can also talk about, uh, uh, we can also, uh, we need also need to deploy the marketplace integration and uh, the web portal for the developer. Then at subscription time, the developer again goes to the marketplace, specifies the runtime parameters of the marketplace, including bandwidth and sponsored data uh, options. And then the developer can upload the models. And then the operator will deploy the the matching pre-built deep stream uh, flavor with the specified model on board, uh, configure the WebRTC server, configure the DNS, configure the access to the web portal and uh, to the developer web portal and, and provide the client key and the URL for the developer to integrate uh, the clients uh, to this service. Then in consumption time, the client accesses the service uh, uh, via URL, the, uh, the, the, the client, uh, the WebRTC client, and then the DNS routes to the closest edge uh, using the location API. The device connection to the media server will trigger a quality of service API and uh, uh, sponsored uh, uh, data API, and uh, which will provide the, the for that specific device for the video streaming. And the media server that fetches the bandwidth and congestion information continuously to optimize the video streaming. And again, if the client is outside of the geofence uh, the area, the inference can be suspended. And uh, finally, we can let's discuss the service consumption triggered uh, runtime pattern. Here, the example is uh, Unity render streaming. Unity itself is a cross-platform game engine, and uh, it's also used uh, all across the uh, industry outside gaming. Um, and uh, it's one of the go-to engines for XR applications, and, uh, and it uh, has very good uh, integration with the uh, uh, XR devices and uh, related uh, technology platforms. Uh, Unity Render Streaming is a, is a application stack which uh, provides rendering ability for browsers uh, using uh, cloud uh, resources. And uh, the use cases include uh, viewing card configurators and architecture models uh, via browser on, on mobile devices. And it also leverages WebRTC. Uh, when it comes to the network API use cases, we are talking about the exact same uh, uh, APIs and the use cases and capabilities. And the difference is that, that at this time, we are uh, not uploading the data, but, but downloading uh, to the, from, from the edge. Uh, so when it comes to the service introduction, uh, we start with operator controller. Then we have a container registry for the uh, three-dimensional application uh, servers. So this is the kind of three-dimensional content and application plus the rendering server uh, previous together and uh, this can be then uploaded by the developer and stored in the dedicated container registry then we have the webrtc signaling servers and the stuntern servers um, uh, the marketplace integration and uh, the web portal for the developer then at subscription time again the developer specifies the runtime parameters on the marketplace plus bandwidth and sponsored data options, upload the 3D applica uh, application server with the content and the rendering built on, on their own machine. And, uh, and then the operator will configure the DNS, configure the access to the web portal, to the web the tiny web application needed for the specific 3D application and provide the client uh, and the URL for the developer uh, to, to, to integrate with the client devices. And then when it comes to consumption, the client connects to the web app via the uh, URL. The operators will spin up uh, the three-dimensional, three-dimension, 3D app serve on the closest edge, again, using the location API. The operator invokes the quality of service and sponsored data APIs. Uh, for that specific uh, session. Uh, the signaling server then will establish the WebRTC session 
and the rendering server can use the bandwidth and congestion APIs to, to optimize the streaming. And again, if the client is outside of the uh, specified geographic area, uh, the geofence capability with location API can, can uh, neglect the service. Finally, before we finish, uh, some notes on the network and, uh, and edge infrastructure. So mobile networks are, uh, are tree structured. And, um, and when it comes to the edge infrastructure, edge is sitting on, the, uh, on some of the nodes uh, of, these, uh, of these trees. And as the networks are developing, more and more edges will appear on these nodes and, uh, and the deeper and deeper in, that, in the network infrastructure starting with the IP exchange points on uh, or closer to the, to the outside world, uh, going deeper into the network infrastructure, ending up on the cloud rent sites, which are, which are really close to the, to the client, uh, mobile client devices. And um, especially when we are talking about nationwide and multi-operator scenarios, there are multiple trees uh, uh, involved in, uh, in, a, in a use case. And, uh, and there are also multiple edge vendors. Uh, so multiple hyperscalers and other third party uh, vendors uh, need to uh, cover a specific area or, or will likely be covering a specific area with edge computing. And so when it comes to orchestrating workloads across larger geographic areas, uh, we are definitely talking about multiple Kubernetes clusters. Uh, within operators and even across, and especially across operators. Um, we have a south-north dependency uh, on the performance, and uh, which means that uh, uh, the closer we put, the, the deeper we provision the workload in the edge, the lower the latency can be. So basically, this then displacement act is an is a SLA fulfillment uh, uh, activity. And, and we also have an east-west dependency when it comes to, uh, so not between the client and the edge like previously, but between the edge to edge communication, which can be key for certain applications. And, and we have to key, uh, consider that, that uh, when it comes to communication between edge nodes between these trees, uh, the latency between the edge synchronization or between the edge nodes can be larger the deeper uh, the provision an application in the edge infrastructure so it's um, and this can be a, a critical factor for some of the demanding applications like message queues where multiple edge nodes are involved or gaming where certain networking or, or mobility scenarios require real-time synchronization between uh, uh, neighboring edge locations and and certain uh, databases and uh, but there are also some less demanding applications like uh, inferencing or stream processing or xr slam when when the focus is really about the client uh, uh, edge uh, communications so we need to consider this when designing uh, a platform service so as a summary uh, today we discuss the economic impact of 5G and the key segments. The 5G network capability API is relevant for uh, edge computing application developments. The mobile operators go to market challenges with these APIs and how tapping into existing ecosystems with third party platforms can potentially mitigate these challenges. Then we have been uh, discussing the typical platforms and enablers relevant for edge computing. And uh, how can we uh, categorize these uh, enablers into uh, platform integration patterns? Then finally, we discussed uh, some uh, concrete implementation examples. Hope you enjoyed the presentation. Thanks for your uh, attention. And uh, if you uh, have further questions, feel free to reach out. Goodbye.